greetings and welcome again to another edition of the End Time Watchman, a program designed to warn you and to make you aware of the soon and imminent coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The title of our program today is What You Allow In Will Take Control. What You Allow In Will Take Control control and we are talking about uh, what we're talking about today is what you watch your eyes what you listen to your ears be careful what you allow in because they will eventually take control and in our search for entertainment enjoyment and uh, even relaxation it is very easy for us to unthinkingly uh, take the world's view of what these things should be or what we can do. It's very easy. And if we, we aren't careful, we can harm ourselves and our relationship with God as Christians. So yes, we have to be extremely careful of what we allow in because they can influence us they can influence our thinking uh, the, the way we do things and the way we react to certain situations and what we allow ourselves to do we have to be careful of that powerful influence the worldly influence be careful of what you allow in I'm not saying that you cannot watch uh, something that is secular, like a secular movie. But then and again, you have to be careful not to cross the line. There's a line that should not be crossed because it is a dangerous thing. Especially if you are a new Christian, you have to be very careful of what you watch. And for example, if you are going to watch uh, an, an R-rated movie or even an X-rated movie, a movie that has strong profanity and strong uh, uh, sexual content, uh, uh, indecent language and such like, it is best to stay away from such things. I'm not saying if you watch it, it's going to be a sin, but it can lead you. It can influence your mind and lead you down that path of destruction. So there are certain things that we should definitely stay away from, like such movies that have very strong worldly uh, content and values. The fact is our eyes and our ears, they are gateways to our very spirit, to our souls. So what we allow in can contaminate. When we be uh, became Christians, when we are born again, our spirit man was cleaned up, clean, spotless for God to come and inhabit. But we can contaminate it with what we allow in through our eyes and ears. Be very careful what you allow in because it can take control of you. There's a general rule I want to share with you from the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It says don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think then you will know the uh, then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and the pleasing and perfect very simple don't copy the world don't copy their behavior don't copy the way they think as before you became a Christian you were one of them but as a Christian we are not allowed to do certain things to, to behave the way they behave to say the things that they say that is why the term is born again because we have to die to that old way of thinking that old way of behaving uh, that old way of talking we have to die 
to it and be born again as a new individual, a new person with a new way of thinking, a godly way of thinking, a godly way of behaving, a godly way of talking. We have to be a new person and that is a way we will know God's will for us and his will is good and perfect. God's will for us is to live a life that is separate from the values of this world. Yes, we live in this world. We are human beings and we have to encounter all manner of things on a daily basis. We will hear things that we don't want to hear. We will see things that we don't want to see. And seeing and hearing stuff like that is, is not sin. It is not sin. But if we allow ourselves to be captivated by those things, then they will be able to enslave us. And that is why, what we have to be careful of. Yes, we will have to use things and do things and hear things and so on and so on and so on because we are here in the world with everybody else. We are human beings like everybody else. But we don't have to allow the world and the things of the world to captivate us, to enslave us. For example, money. We have to use money to do everything. It is a very important element in human uh, living. But we don't have to allow it to captivate us, to enslave us, because money can very easily become a god. And you know that is a grave sin, to have idols. Money can become an idol. You can uh, fall in love with money so much that you start pursuing it and it will take over your life and God will have to take a, a, a back burner because of your love for money. So that is what, that is something, you know, we just have to be so, uh, be so careful about. This verse in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. Yes, there are things we can do, yes, as Christians, that is not downright sin. But again, there is always a line that we have to be very, very careful not to cross. We cannot go too far with certain things because it can enslave us. That is why it says we must not, we, we have to choose something, you know, we have to choose to not cross over that line. We have to choose to not allow certain things to enslave us and lead us down to that path of destruction. Yes, we do have freedom to choose to be careful to who we listen to, to what we listen to, and even to what we watch we can choose we have that freedom to choose so we don't have an excuse to say oh you know i live in the world i cannot avoid these things i have to do it you know they're right there what can i do you can choose to avoid them you can choose to close your eyes if 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 necessary you can choose to put your hands over your ears if necessary you can choose to do what is right so you will have no excuse galatians chapter 5 verse 7 to 8 he says you were running the race so well who has held you back from following the truth in other words nobody can really hold you back if you don't allow it verse 8 says it certainly isn't god for he is the one who called you to freedom nobody can hold you back and God will not hold you back either you can choose God has given you the freedom yes but you will have to choose to do what is right to follow the truth and to stay away from the things that you know can captivate you and lead you to sin It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, 
therefore come out from among believers and separate yourselves from them says the Lord don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you come out from among unbelievers separate yourselves from them says the Lord and don't touch their filthy things there's certain things that we should definitely stay away from you know like pornography uh, masturbation uh, uh, filthy movies you know dirty songs that you know they will speak profanity you know will have indecent language all those things they are a definite no-no people that you know have no good intentions will do their utmost best to lead you away from God stay away from such people there are such certain things that we just clearly cut off because they are definitely no good be careful what you allow in you don't want anything to have a negative influence on your mind on your way of thinking on your way of doing things as a child of God the fact is if the main things that we are allowing is godless we will eventually be godless we have to be careful why you should be careful I'll just give you a few points you know we learn lessons that seldom work out in life if we are not careful if we are not careful we can accept a secular picture of the world we often are not truly refreshed and whatever enjoyment we get very quickly fade away very quickly wears out if we're not careful we can develop impure sexual thoughts and lust if we are not careful we can learn to accept ungodly violence as okay if we are not careful we can very easily become materialistic we have to be careful and these are some very 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 good reasons why we must be careful what we allow in what we watch what we listen to who we watch who we listen to be very careful therefore what should we do what we what should we do Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says and now dear brothers and sisters one final thing fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise that is what we should do fix our minds on God fix our minds on the things of God and although we have to be in the world and live as the world uh, live in the world in terms of of what we need to do to live in this world we will not be captivated by the world and the things of the world we will not be enticed by the pleasures and the enjoyments of the world according to how they know it because our minds are fixed on God we are minds are fixed on the heavenly things you know we have a hope of, of better things we have a hope of, of better enjoyment of lasting enjoyment fix our minds on things that are true on a right pure lovely and admirable and we will be on the right track again be careful what you allow in because as christians today as you know we, we we can get very careless in our pursuit of enjoyment in our pursuit of entertainment and relaxation let us be careful what we allow in because what we allow in will eventually take over watch godly stuff listen to godly stuff let them be 
priority. Uh, you know, as I said before, you, we don't have to completely cut off certain secular things, but minimize them. Make what you what you watch the majority of what you watch and listen be things of God, according to uh, the verse we just read, Philippians four, chapter eight. Things that are, are spiritually benefiting to you, and if you are able to completely cut off uh, secular stuff, uh, you know, good for you. Good for you. So be, let us be careful what we watch what we listen to let us be careful what we allow allow in and uh, with that i'll come to the end of the program i hope you have been enlightened and uh, in some way or the other and uh, just before i go just quickly uh for those of you who you may be watching and uh, uh you know you're you're not a christian you you feel the nudge of jesus christ of the holy spirit uh, pulling you to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior today is your day and I want to invite you to accept him as Lord and Savior today all of us we need Jesus it doesn't matter how good we think we are we need salvation it says it's Romans uh, 3 10 as the scriptures say no one is righteous not even one verse 23 says uh, for everyone has sinned we all fall short of God's glorious standard. We all need Jesus. We all need salvation if we want to escape hell and get to heaven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It is only through him that we can get to heaven. So we need him. And if you don't want to accept this, then hell will be your portion. You will have to pay the price for your sins that is what he did when he came and died he paid the price for our sins but failure to accept what he has done for you romans 6 23 tells us for the wages of sin is death you will have to be separated from god for all eternity in hell suffering for all eternity the verse goes on to say but the free gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus our Lord again Jesus is the answer he is the only way how can we receive the salvation very simple Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 10 uh, verses 9 to 10 it says if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. In a nutshell, voice it, openly declare it, believe it, and you will receive it. It is not, a very, it is not complicated and it is available for everyone. That's why it says in Romans 10, chapter, 30, uh, chapter 10, verse 13, it says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. No exceptions. Everyone, if you call upon the Lord with a sincere heart, if you want to be saved, you want him to forgive you of, us, of your sins, he will because he's willing and waiting to do it. And anyone can come to him. It doesn't matter who you are and what you have done. Everybody has this equal opportunity today thank Jesus for he is our shining light that is why he says in John chapter 12 verse 46 I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark all you need to do is to trust Jesus put your trust in him and where you were, were once living in darkness not knowing your left from right, not knowing where to go. You can step over into his light and you will be able to see clearly, see where you're going, see where you're headed and go on that path, that narrow path of righteousness that will lead you directly to heaven. So come to Jesus today. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and he will. It is a simple 
as as you talk to your friends as you talk to anybody else just talk to god and tell him your intentions and he's there with open arms he will hear you he will understand you because he sees your heart he knows your your sincerity and if you come to him with a sincere heart he will not turn your way he will not turn your way come to him today before it is too late time is not on your side jesus christ is coming back soon he can come today or he can even call you today because tomorrow is not promised to any one of us so let us not take chance with our eternity let us make the move today and accept jesus christ and ensure that as we cross over into eternity that we will be on the right side of the fence accept him today before it is too late thank you for joining us today god wish we bless you goodbye don't forget that to contact me for any reason you can find me on facebook by searching for curtis minister roach minister curtis roach or our page the end time watchman just leave me a message and i'll reply at my earliest also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and be blessed by the hundreds of videos available to you. Please feel free to share any video to help us spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You can also follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Should the Lord continue to tarry, see you next time. God bless. Sound the trumpet now Hear the Father say Sound the yeah, is coming in Don't get left behind Don't get left behind Boy. The rapture yeah, is coming Don't get left behind Don't get left behind